my heart is racing. Just chill, this is chill. Welcome to the Operation Office Project Breakdown. In this room, we use two different IKEA hacks and a whole bunch of other stuff along the way, and I wanna take you through step by step, walking you through each and every single thing that I did. So let's get into it. essentially comprised of five different projects. We have the accent feature wall, the built-in Billy bookcases, the bench with storage in the middle, also the custom trim that's around the windows, as well as the built-in IKEA desk hack. So I wanna take you through each of those projects step-by-step, step, showing you how we brought those to life. That way, if you wanna recreate it in the future, you can. Hi, my name is Crystal, and welcome to Perkins on Parkway. Here we do all sorts of DIYs, home decor projects, smaller one day DIYs, anything that we can do to make our home feel more intentional, beautiful, and make things with our own two hands. So you may have noticed, but this project did not happen at my house. This is actually my friend Chase and Giovanna's house. They were so generous to let me come in and do all of these projects at their home. And I really wanted to do this because a couple of years ago, Giovanna was diagnosed with a super rare disease. It's called Castleman's disease. I have a whole blog post about it if you wanna go read more. And it essentially upended their entire Entire life and so Chase got a new job where he was working remotely so that he could help be a full-time caretaker for her so I really wanted them to have an office where they could both hang out during the day be cozy spend time together and I just absolutely love how it turns out like when I was building this bench I could just imagine them hanging out in here during the day and it just made me so happy so not my house Chase and Giovanna's house I really thought that I would come in here and knock this project out like really quickly but if there's anything DIY will teach you is that things never go according to plan. So the first thing that I tackled was this accent wall and during the process of doing this feature wall, I got in two separate car accidents. One was my fault, the other one was not. So things don't go to plan. I thought I would have it done in a couple months. It ended up taking over a year. So they were just like very generous with the timing and so understanding across the entire process. And so I just wanted to give them a little shout out for that. And Giovanna is doing so much better, still dealing day to day with you know managing an autoimmune disease but overall feeling a lot better than she was, you know, a couple years ago. So that's awesome. So with that, I wanna jump into the first project that I tackled, which is this feature wall. So Giovanna and Chase have a little bit more of a traditional style. I would say that my home is a little bit more modern. So when I was thinking through kind of the design that I wanted to do for them, I knew I needed to have it more in a traditional space, which is why I wanted to bring in this beadboard. So that was where the design process started. I knew I wanted an accent wall back here, especially with the desk being on this side of the room for them to have a nice backdrop for when they're doing Zoom calls. So that was where the whole process started. So I wanted to marry my more modern style with their more traditional style and that's kind of where we landed on this design. So at Home Depot, they sell sheets of beadboard in eight feet by four feet sheets, and the ceilings in here are actually nine feet. So I had to get creative for how I was gonna make those beadboard panels work in here and not have any of the seams present. It was interesting because that really is what spurred this design style, and I really like the way it looked. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how the eight foot sheets were gonna fit on a nine foot wall, and I didn't want a teeny tiny seam at the top. So what I ended up doing was cutting the beadboard panels down, but I had them cut it down into the three foot sections and then I cover the seams using the trim. So you get this really cool modular effect. So the first thing that I did before I put anything up on the wall was found where all the studs in the wall were. That was important to me because I knew I was gonna have to drill into the studs and shoot into the studs if I wanted everything to stay super secure. I didn't wanna use liquid nails because if you've ever worked with liquid nails before, in the future, if you ever wanna take it down, it is a beast to remove. So I knew I just wanted to use nails. So I went through, I found all of the studs and I marked them on the floor. And then when I had my beadboard panels cut down, I started installing them. And I installed them a little haphazardly because I knew I was gonna have that one by four trim go across the front. I didn't have to be super particular about it. So I installed all of the beadboard panels first and then knew I would have that one by four trim going across the gap that was gonna be happening in all of the beadboard panels. So I installed the beadboard on the wall using my nail gun and I put the nails both in the studs and then if I didn't have a stud behind the beadboard, I shot the nails in crisscross, which basically anchors the beadboard to the wall. So once all of that was up, the next part was putting the trim over those gaps and I started with the horizontal trim first and I used my laser level. This was really important because I knew that those had to be straight or it would throw off all the 90 degrees that I needed in the squares. So I set up the laser level, I put the first board up and it was like a one by four by 12 because this wall is actually 
actually 17 feet long, which is super huge. So I set it up and then I used my nail gun and I shot it into the studs as well as crisscrossing it across the rest of the wall. That way it was really stuck on there. So I used my laser level and then I got the trim all aligned with that and then I went in with my nail gun and attached it to the wall. I did the two horizontal pieces first um, in the middle and then I obviously had the top trim and the bottom baseboard trim So I got all four of those in first and then I went in with the vertical slats and I cut all of those to fit in between all of those different pieces and then went in and put those in so I had the beadboard as the back to all of that and then the horizontal trim and then the vertical trim. And I use those one by four for all of the different seams. That was big enough to be able to get me to get those three different panels when I cut down the beadboard to cover all of the seams. So I thought it ended up looking really, really good. I love that the beadboard is more traditional and then the trim over the top is that more modern style, which I think just marries together really well and looks really, really nice. After I got everything up on the wall, the next part was wood filling all of the joints. I went in with plastic wood and then I let that dry and then I had to sand all of that down flush so that it would look really nice underneath the paint. After we did the wood filling I had to do the caulk and that took a really long time because I had to caulk every single one of those squares on both sides and then I also had to caulk the individual seams in between the beadboard panels when they meet. Beadboard panels are awesome because they are meant to go together so you can't really see the seam once it has been caulked and I feel like on this wall you can't tell at all which is really really nice. So after all that finishing and detail work was done it was time to paint. If you're ever going to paint raw wood you need to make sure that you're priming the raw wood because if you don't your raw wood is just going to absorb all of the paint product that you put on it. So the primer is a nice blocker. I used my favorite bin primer that I used in the rest of this project too to do the entire wall and I really should have had a paint sprayer or something like that but we were doing this on a budget so I didn't <laughs> I ended up actually hand painting the whole entire wall by myself solo so I think I went over this with a paintbrush four times in total because I did two coats of primer I primed sanded primed again because I really wanted a smooth flat finish and then I went in and in all of like the crevices in the beadboard went through with a paintbrush because I wanted to get really good coverage to make sure that I was getting all of those and then painted the rest of the wall. I feel like I've had bad luck in the past when I use a foam roller on a slick surface. It doesn't always give me the finish that I want. I've had better luck using a brand new clean paintbrush to get that so that's what I really wanted to translate to the wall. So I think it ended up looking so good. The color that we used is called Shiitake by Vals Valsper. Valsper. Honestly, I don't know how you say that. You can get it at Lowe's. It is like the perfect like mud mushroomy green color which I really really loved we knew we were gonna paint this entire room so it was important that we found like the perfect green Giovanna I think looked at hundreds of samples in order to find the color that like we thought was was perfect so I'm really really happy with how it turned out we carried that color from the wall everywhere else in the room it's on the ceiling it's on all the walls and I think it's just like a really nice contrast we ended up not painting these built-ins which we'll get to in just a second but I think the green and like the creamy white really work well together. So the wall took a little bit of time to finish because I did get in those two car accidents in the middle. So we finished that around May of last year. If you have any questions on how I did the accent wall, go ahead and drop those in the comments and I will get back to you. So those are kind of all the steps that the feature wall took. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transition into the second project that we went ahead and did. So let's transition into the second project that we did, which is this Ikea Billy bookcase hack. The funny thing about these Ikea Billy bookcases is that they were actually Michael and I's. So these have really seen a lot. They went from us to them and now they look like this, which is kind of just a fun aside. With the bookcases here, I knew that I needed to have the depth of them be greater because I wanted to put this bench in the middle. The bench was a really nice way to kind of like trim out the entire window and make it feel like one substantial unit. Originally, they just had the Billy bookcases in here floating on either side. And so as soon as I saw that, I just this whole vision just kind of like came to life for how I felt like this entire thing could work. This room is actually pretty big, so I didn't feel like we were gonna lose anything by taking some of the depth away over here. They still have plenty of space in here. So the first thing that we did with the Billy bookcases was we needed to anchor them to the wall, and I also needed to fur them out about six to eight inches in order to get the depth for the bench that I wanted. Because at the end of the day, what I really wanted was the bench and the bookcases to be flush and look like one cohesive unit. So the first thing I had to do was build out some framing that I was going to connect to the wall and the studs and then attach those Billy bookcases to. Some people have asked like why I didn't build like custom bookcases to begin with because you do lose that like depth behind them and I could have done that 
but I already had the Billy bookcases and it was way more cost effective for me to just build out that frame behind than go and buy so many more sheets of plywood. If a nice sheet of plywood is like $100. It probably cost me $50 for the framing materials for behind both these bookcases. So I already had the Billy bookcases on hand. If you wanted to do this hack and you didn't feel as comfortable like building an entire bookcase, I would say this is for you. If you're like a more professional woodworker, then I would say go for it and build your own custom bookcases. But I think this is a really nice happy medium for people that are wanting to try their hand at a project like this, but don't necessarily feel like they can build an entire bookshelf. Some people I've seen do a similar type of project where they actually just have an entire wall of Billy bookcases to make more of a library without a bench. And you don't have to do that framing behind. I just need to do the framing for my project because I wanted it to sit flush with the bench. So I build out this framing behind and then I attach the framing into the studs and then I attach the bookshelf to the studs. In Texas, we are on slab, which is basically concrete. If I had been somewhere that had a wood subfloor, I would have also drilled into the subfloor, but we don't have that here. And I didn't want to put a concrete anchor um, into the concrete here because you just, you never know what's going to happen. I don't anticipate these leaving any time soon, but you know, maybe they wake up next year and they hate it and they want to tear it out. I didn't want to do anything to the floor that would make it hard for them to remove. So at the end of the day, that's what I went with. It's very solid. It's very sturdy. I did a lot of bad shake tests to make sure that nothing was going to go anywhere. And that was just kind of the approach that I took. I was making it up as I went along. I attached the framing to the wall, drilled those into the anchors, drilled the Ikea Billy bookcases into the framing as well as into the studs on either side. With all of that stable, it was time to build the bench in the middle. The bench was essentially just building a box. I used my favorite tool, this Craig jig. I actually upgraded for this project because I knew I was going to be drilling a lot of pocket holes. Then you use a Craig jig screw to attach it together. So I built the bottom square and then I cut all the pieces and then I built the top square and I attached everything together and it was a box. And then I stuck the box in the middle of the bookcases and attached everything into the studs. Again, some people were kind of pressed about me covering the outlet that's back there, but there's literally an outlet back there. There's an outlet over here. So I wasn't worried about it. And I knew I was going to make it so that the top could open. So I wasn't worried if they really desperately needed that outlet, they could always open it and plug something in, but they don't. So once I had the box, it was time to start trimming everything out. And I wanted to carry the beadboard over from the accent wall on the front of the bench. So I cut the beadboard down to size using my table saw and then attached the beadboard to the bench using brown nails, my nail gun, which I love. I love my nail gun. So that was kind of how I wanted to like keep the design like flowing through the room. And I think it turned out looking really, really nice. The other step that I had to do for the bench was add the bench top. This was my first time using a piano hinge and it worked really easy. You just screw everything in. So the bench top is actually a piece of plywood that we bought and I bought one piece of plywood and had it cut down at the store into the dimensions that I needed. So when I went shopping to buy the plywood, I knew I wanted to use the eight foot by four foot piece of plywood. I knew I needed it to be the bench top and then I also knew that I needed it to be the arches on both of the bookcases. The plywood was three quarters of an inch thick and all of my trim was gonna be three quarters of an inch thick. So I knew that, that everything would match and be flush together with that. So I knew that going to the store. So at the store, I had them cut it down into the dimensions that I knew I needed. I made a little cut list. I'll find a picture of that and put it up here on screen so that if you ever go to do the same thing. I feel like when you can get those cuts made at the store at least they're reasonably accurate and it makes it a lot easier to like transport I get really stressed whenever I have to go to the hardware store and buy a ton of wood I just feel like by the end of it I'm dripping with sweat and regretting every decision I've ever made in my entire life so if there's anything like that you can do at the store to like make your life easier when you're loading and unloading the car I recommend that so back to the bench top, I had them cut it down into a big piece of plywood that could fit over the entire bench. And then I cut it down here to make the two separate pieces that were going to be connected together with the piano hinge in order to open. I also cut the bench top down into two sections because I knew it was going to be really long. I, in cabinet making, I feel like if it's over 60 inches, you need a support in the middle or else it will sag. So when I was building my bench, I created a support in the middle and I could set down both pieces of the bench top right there that it wouldn't sag. So that's kind of the design that I went with. So I used two piano hinges, screwed everything together, and then they worked and I was so happy about it. <laughs> it was my first time ever using it. So I, you just never know. I mean, it, it all, it seems like it'll work, but you're like, does it work? 
So we did that and then my favorite part about the bench is for the trim on the front, I ended up being able to use that as a handle. I thought that was a really good idea because the trim from the handle was gonna tie in with the trim that was gonna be on the front of the bookcases. So instead of having a separate opening or drilling holes in the top or having any sort of like hardware on it, you can literally just pick it up and that way when you sit on it, it's still comfortable, it looks really good. And I ended up being really happy with that. So we got all of that done on the bench and then the bench was pretty much ready to go. I held off on doing the baseboard across the front and everything else until I had the bookcases all the way trimmed out because I knew that I wanted everything to match up in the end and I was glad that I did that. One thing that I forgot to mention is before I installed the bench top, I actually ran hard hardboard, hardy board, up the side of the bookcases because I needed to camouflage the framing behind the Billy bookcase and I want it to look like one unit. So I ran that all the way up to the ceiling. It actually gave me some extra height too. I knew that I needed to run the whole thing up to the ceiling, but obviously the Billy bookcases were only so tall. So I ended up running that all the way to the top and knew that when I put the arch on the front, they would like meet together. So I ran that up the side, that way I could get the perfect size of a bench top so that way it would open and shut when I had those installed. So I wanted to mention that and I'll show that so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. After the bench was installed, it was time to add the arches and add the trim to the front of the bookcases. And I was most nervous about cutting out the arch. I don't have a router. I probably will buy one after this just because they do make such a clean look when you need to cut out something that's not super straight. So when you're working with something that has curves, it just takes a little bit more finesse. And this is the first time I'd ever done that. So I ended up drawing the arch on both pieces of plywood using the string and pencil method, <laughs> where you literally just stick a tack, add some string, and then draw the arch. So I did one first and then I cut it out with the jigsaw. And it was all going great until I tried to overcompensate. And so it turned out looking okay. But if I could go back in time and set up a router and do that to cut the arch, out I think that I would so I just had to sand a lot in order to be able to get the shape that I wanted and then when I was repeating the second arch I took the first arch that I had made and traced that in order to get them to look the same so I used the plywood traced my shape cut it out with a jigsaw and then just sanded 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 I also had to build a little bit of framing on top of the bookcases I needed it to go all the way to the ceiling I added some framing on the ceiling some framing up the walls so that way when I went to attach the plywood to the front it would have something to anchor to. So I cut everything out and then I brought it in here and I installed it and I was so happy because I thought it looked so good. I knew that I was gonna have to trim out because the ceiling was a little bit wonky. The walls, like when you're working with a house, the walls are just never plumb. Like everything just kind of, you just gotta get creative in making sure that everything looks straight. So once I got the arches up, it was time to frame out the front of the bookcases and that's where I was talking about the plywood that three quarter of an inch matched the trim that is also three quarter of an inch. So I installed all of that with my nail gun and then I went through and had to wood fill everything. I'd say that was one of the most time consuming parts of the project was you just have to go through and you have to get all of the nail holes, you have to get all of the seams and you just wanna make sure that that gets filled super well and then you have to go in and sand everything to make sure that it looks super smooth before you paint. If you don't do that, it's gonna look really spotty. So that's the kind of tedious stuff that's not like super exciting to like film or record or share but that's the kind of stuff I feel like makes a difference between it looking like a DIY project and like a professional project. I really love plastic wood, that's my favorite. I feel like it doesn't have any shrinkage so I use that and it, the product will change depending on if you're going for a raw wood look or if you're going for a painted wood look obviously I knew I was painting this whole thing so the plastic wood worked really well for that sometimes if you're gonna stain you can do something else to make it look a little bit better because sometimes plastic wood has a hard time accepting stain we went through sanded everything down and then we were ready to go ahead and move into the caulking and priming stage so for the Billy bookcases I went in and I caulked every single seam on every single shelf one of the things I wish I had done before I installed the Billy bookcases is taken the back the backer board and shot some nails through the backer board into the shelves when you assemble a Billy bookcase from Ikea they give you nails for the outside and nails for the middle but you do not secure the back the backer board to any of the other shelves I wish I would have done that that I would say is a mistake that I made because when I went in to try and caulk it would start to separate because the caulk was basically pushing the 
backer board away from it and I wish I had had a nail there to like keep it. So if you're gonna do this project, definitely go through and nail your backer board to every single shelf. I had them pick where they wanted all the shelves to go because another thing that I wanted to do was fill in all of the holes. On a Billy bookcase, you can move the shelves, right? So they have all of the holes on the side, but I felt like closing all of those and having the shelves be stationary was gonna give a much more custom built-in look. So that's what we ended up doing. So knowing that, you know, if you still wanna move them, you don't have to do that part of the project at all, but that was important for this, for me, because I wanted it to look like really custom. So we filled all the holes with spackle, sanded that down, and then went to every single seam and we caulked it. That way when we could go over it with the primer, everything was basically gonna just disappear. A couple people have asked the top shelf that I have on the arches, they're like, why is it so small? If I could go back in time, I probably either would have A, taken off the top shelf to make the top shelf taller, or B, would have shortened the arch a little bit, that way it could have been like a functional shelf. When I was deciding how far down to make the arch, I was thinking about like the rule of thirds and how far I would need it to be down for it to be reasonable to my eye once it had the crown molding on. I wasn't taking into account the shelves, which, you know, I could go back in and remove that top shelf. I just haven't gotten around to it. So when you're thinking about that for where you want your arch to land, that is something to keep in mind. Cause I have had a couple of people mention to be like, well, why did you do it that way? Well, sometimes that's just how it happens. This is the first time I've ever done it. So. so then we went through and we caulked everything. Everything had been sanded and wood filled and then it was time to prime. We again used my favorite bin primer and went through and just primed everything. When you go through and you prime your bench, if you do that, just make sure that your bench, when you let it dry, just have it dry open or it will get primed together or painted together. So that's just something you wanna think about. And then the other thing we did was obviously had to caulk the sides where it was hitting the feature wall over here as well as the plain wall over here when we got into painting it there's a hack you can do with um, painters tape where you run the painters tape down the wall and then you run a little bead of caulk and then paint over it and then pull it off and it looks super clean so we did that and it looks really really good so that was kind of the entire like bench build process and the entire Billy bookcase hack process so the other project that we did in here was we added custom trim to all of the windows in between the Billy bookcases we decided to run the trim from bookcase to bookcase I think it makes it look like one cohesive unit which is really really nice in order to create this trim look we used a one by six and then we added a one by two board to the top of it we just went in with some brad nails and secured it together and it gives that nice finished look of having a little bit more dimension than if you're just doing like a flat trim piece so we added that to the top that's kind of like the header piece and then we had the one by four running across the bottom and then we also ran one by fours down from the one by six vertically. And so you can see that we have like that, we have the little slivers of green that are coming through showing like the wall color, but everything else is painted that white to make it look really intentional, really custom. And we actually did that in the desk nook area too. We ran the entire header across both windows just to have some symmetry between both of them being in the same space. I think it looks really nice. Uh, <laughs> I did a poll on my Instagram and had people like vote on what they thought I should do and they thought I should definitely trim them out individually. And maybe that would've looked really good, but I like the way it looks this way, so. The last project that we did was the Ikea desk hack. Chase and Giovanna already had the two Alex drawer sets as well as the countertop they had bought from Ikea. They knew they had this little nice window nook, but it turned out that they actually didn't fit exactly. The countertop was just a little short. So what I decided to do was trim everything out to make it look a little bit more intentional. So we took those Ikea Alex units and we added some trim around the front of the drawers because those are a little bit more modern and obviously we're trying to lean more into a traditional space. So I just cut the trim at like a 45 and trimmed out the front of each one of those drawers and I thought that looked really nice. It was a nice way to just like make it look more traditional. And then what we also did is because it was a couple inches short on each side for that nook, I built out some custom trim to go across the top and across the bottom. So that way the Ikea Alex drawer sets would fit in there and it would look like they just went in all the way to the wall. It wouldn't, you wouldn't have that gap when you were sitting everything in that nook. And then we painted them all the same color so the bookcases and the desk are actually painted the same color which I think again adds to the symmetry of it a lot of people were saying that I should paint this green I think we I think that definitely would have looked good but there's also something about having a pop of color 
I know monotone is really having its moment right now and I love that in my own home. I like here what the white does is it adds a lot of depth to the room. So the desk and the bookcases are actually painted the same color. It's the color Whipped by Claire Paint. Another thing that we did on the desk that I think really adds to that overall like built-in custom feel is we added hardware to the front. Hardware is like jewelry in a room. It's always gonna make something feel more luxe, more intentional. So I'm really happy with how the desk turned out. It was a pretty simple fix that took a couple days that I feel like just adds a lot versus if you were to have the two Alex drawers there with the countertop that didn't quite fit. It just makes it feel a lot more intentional, which I love. Some of the other little happy accidents that happened while I was doing this project is I bought these custom covers for the outlets that were paintable and they looked really good because you know when you have a white outlet on a green wall it's kind of an eyesore so I bought these paintable outlets you can find those in my Amazon store I went to go put it on the beadboard wall and it was a little bit smaller than the hole I had cut for the outlet to come through the beadboard I ended up adding this little custom trim moment around the outlet which is actually so cute it looks like a little picture frame down there I really love that and then we also got some amazing lights from lights.com. We installed that one here. And then in the desk nook, I installed two lights over there. Eventually we hoped to hardwire those. We didn't have time or money to bring in an electrician. So we ended up using a rechargeable light bulb for those. But I think in the future, once they're able to be hardwired, it's gonna be really, really nice. We ran new trim throughout the entire room using the one by four, which I think is a really nice way to kind of like keep everything consistent. You can see the crown molding that I made for the bookcase is also that one by four with a one by two on top. So a lot of symmetry happening with the one by twos and the one by fours and the one by sixes in the room that just makes it all feel like it's tied together in a really nice way. One other thing that I wanted to mention is on this bookcase over here there was an air vent that was kind of in the way and we toyed around with like well do we go up into the attic do we move the air vent and originally that was what the plan was gonna be but they had decking down in their whole entire attic so I just didn't want to deal with that and so we ended up basically like building a jig where it just kind of like went around and adding some ductwork behind to force the air out and I think it was a pretty good solution that kind of just disappears we painted the air ducts the same color as the ceiling so I don't feel like you really notice them and when you're looking at it straight on I feel like it looks pretty good things I learned while I was working on this number one I always underestimate how much time a DIY project is gonna take so however long I think it should take I just need to add a couple weeks to that every single time obviously for when we first started to completion it took a year for this project to get done I think there's something to be said about also doing DIY at a place that isn't your own house in order to like get up and get out of the door that just takes a lot more effort than like rolling out of bed and being in the project also living with the project you feel a little bit more motivated to get your space back together obviously this wasn't at my house so I'm sure Chase and Giovanna felt that way but they were they were really nice to me throughout the entire process the last part of this entire project and making it come together was the styling I had a really awesome vintage company called Context Vintage donate some of the items that we use to style these bookshelves. Laloy Rugs donated this beautiful rug. This is such a huge space, so we knew we were gonna need like an eight by 12 rug in order to make all of this feel really intentional, really custom, really good. So Laloy Rugs was generous enough to donate this rug. So there were a lot of different companies that like came together lights.com donated the lights for this project there was just a lot of love for chase and giovanna after everything that they had gone through medically and a lot of amazing companies that wanted to participate in making this come to life and thank you so much for providing those items for this product we couldn't have done it without you lowe's also donated a 500 dollars gift card so just really really grateful for all the amazing partners that were able to help make that happen so styling the bookshelves was really fun because we got to kind of go through giovanna's home she'd been collecting knickknacks and things that were sentimental to them over the years so we got to kind of incorporate those and then did some thrifting for some other items because we were doing this on a budget I love thrifting for unique special things to be able to display on shelves like that and then I hope what they do as the years evolve is as they travel as they find cool things they add those elements because you don't want your home to look like a staged home you want it to look like you you want it to feel like you you want to have things that are sentimental and mean things to you so I'm hopeful that they will have this area in their home to kind of like provide that as a form of self-expression for them yeah so that's everything we did in this room we did this custom accent feature wall we did the ikea billy bookcase hack with the built-in bench in the middle we did the custom craftsman trim around all the windows and we did the ikea alex desk hack so whew, that's a lot of stuff and you know we painted the whole room we styled the whole room we did a lot of other fun things so it was just a huge project a huge undertaking and i'm just so happy that it's finally done So if you have any questions, if there's anything I missed, which I'm sure I did, please go ahead and drop those in the comments below and I will get back to you as quick as I can. Thank you so much for being a part of the Perkins on Parkway family. Couldn't do this without ya.
Bye.